The Story of Civilization, Part 2, The Life of Greece, in the history of Greek civilization from the beginnings and of civilization in the Near East, from the death of Alexander to the Roman conquest, with an introduction on the prehistoric culture of Greece. And we conclude Chapter 4, Sparta, with part or section 7 here. Agina and Epidaurus. Across the bay from Megara and Corinth, earthquake had raised or left one of their earliest rivals in industry and trade. The island of Agina, there, in Macanaan times, a prosperous city developed, whose graves gave up much gold. The conquering Dorians found the land too barren for tillage, but admirably placed for commerce. When the Persians came, the island knew only an aristocracy of tradesmen, eager to sell the excellent vases and bronze produced in their shops for the slaves whom they imported in great number to work in their factories are for sale to the cities of Greece. Aristotle, about 350 BCE, calculated that Agina had a population of half a million, of whom 470,000 were slaves. Here the first Greek coins were made, and the Aginetan weights and measures remained standard in Greece till its conquest by Rome. That such a commercial community could graduate from wealth to art was revealed when, in 1811, a traveler discovered in a heap of rubbish the vigorous and finely carved figures that once adorned the pediment of the temple of the of the temple itself. Twenty-two Doric columns stand still bearing their architrave. Probably the Agnetans built it shortly before the Persian War, for though its architecture is classic, its statuary shows many traces of the archaic, semi-oriental style. Possibly, however, it was raised after Salamis for the statuary, which represents Agnetans overcoming Trojans. They symbolize the perennial conflict between Greece and the Orient and the recent victory won by the Greek fleet under the very brows of Agina at Salamis. To that fleet, the little island contributed 30 ships, and one of these, after the victory, was awarded by the Greeks the first prize for bravery. A pleasant boat ride takes the traveler from Agina to Atharis, now a village of 500 souls, but once among the most famous cities of Greece, for here are rather ten miles out in a narrow gorge among the loftiest mountains of the Argolic Peninsula was the chief home of Asclepius, the hero god of healing. O oh, Asclepius, Apollo himself had said through his oracle at Delphi, thou who art born a great joy to all mortals whom lovely Ronis bare to me, the child of love at Rocky Epidaurus. And what might that symbolically say about deity or otherwise? Asclepius cured so many people. Well, people attribute curing to whatever they worship. Even raising a man from the dead, that Pluto god of Hades complained to Zeus that hardly anyone was dying anymore, and Zeus, who would hardly know what to do with the human race if it were not for death, destroyed Asclepius with a thunderbolt. But the people first at Thessala, then in Greece, worshipped him as a savior god. Yeah, thousands were worshipped as savior gods through history, maybe more, who knows. At Epicurus, they raised him the greatest of his temples, and there the physician priest, who from him were called Asclepiads, established a sanitarium known throughout 
tell us for its success in treating disease. Epidaurus became a, a Greek lords. Pilgrims flocked to it from every part of the Mediterranean world, seeking what the Greeks seemed the greatest boon of all, health. Lords, of course, being the most, at least it was earlier in my lifetime, the most popular Christian pilgrimage place. Um, specifically, I mean, people go to the Va Vatican and people go to Jerusalem, but, you know, something, well, the Vatican specifically Christian, you know, when Lourdes has, has uh, up to six, several million people visit it every year for the purpose of pilgrimage. And they slept in their temp in the temple, submitted hopefully to the regimen prescribed, and recorded their, cur their cures, which they believed to be miraculous on stone tablets that still lie here and there among the ruins of the sacred grove. It was out of the fees and gifts of these patients that Agaras built its theater and the stadium whose seats and goals still lie in the lap of the neighboring hills and the lovely Alas, a circular colonnaded building whose surviving fragments preserved in the little museum are among the most exquisitely carved marbles in Greece. The day such patients go to Tennis in the Theclades, where the priest of the Greek church healed them, as those of Asclepius healed their forerunners 2,500 years ago. Well, Christianity took over a lot of the shrines and, you know, just had a new saint or something in it. Right, are made the entity into a saint, a uh, early Christian or something was the story. Or... And the gloomy peak, where once the people of Epidaurus sacrificed to Zeus and Hera, is now the sacred mount of Saint Elias. The gods, well, you know what they call gods, are mortal, but piety is everlasting. Well, just because people aren't worshipping a particular entity doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But, you know, some names and stuff go and come. And some entities actually stop being worshipped. That's possibly a reason for the resurgence of the demonology is that these various entities, they want cults again. So they're, you know, speaking to people who will write grimoires and stuff for them. What the student looks for most eagerly at Epidaurus is not the leveled ruins of the Asclepium. The land is well wooded here, and he does not see the perfect theater that he is seeking until a turn in the road spreads it out against the mountainside in a gigantic fan of stone. Pelaclitus the Younger built it in the 4th century before our era, but even to this day it is almost completely preserved. As the traveler stands in the center of the orchestra, our dancing place, a spacious circle paved with stone and sees before him 14,000 seats in rising tiers, so admirably designed that every seat directly faces him as his glance follows the radiating aisles that rise in swift straight lines from the stage to the trees of the mountain slope above as he speaks quietly to his friends. On the farthest, highest seats, 200 feet away, and perceives that his every word is understood, then he visions Agaros in the days of its prosperity sees in his mind's eye the crowds coming out in joyous freedom from the shrine and city to hear Eurypides, and feels more than ever that he can ever express the vibrant, plain air life of the ancient Greece. And one kind of wonders what's now and what's it's going to be in the future, as in, you know, maybe it's going to stay religious of some sort, but the forms and the cults are going to 